Checking for certain data types in JavaScript can sometimes be a bit tricky. You may not get what you expect. In this tutorial, we are going to look at how we can check for objects and what we can learn about the JavaScript language from doing that. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And also check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. And if you feel so inclined to support this channel, there is a link in the description for doing that as well. Now, last year, Fattis Marina, and I apologize for my pronunciation, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that name correctly, but he did several articles on JavaScript snippets. And I'll link to this article in the description. Now, these snippets are always fun to look at and see what you can learn about how JavaScript is used. As a part of these snippets, he showed three different functions for checking for objects. Is object, is object like, and is plain object. Now, why three different ones? What is the difference between the three? And I also want to take a look at the code and see how the code is used so we can understand it better. But basically, they're going to return different information depending upon what type of data we are sending to the function. Each of these functions return a Boolean, either true or false. So it either is an object meeting that criteria, is an object like, or is a plain object, or it is not. Now, many data types are considered objects in JavaScript. So before we jump into looking at these functions, I think it is important to understand the drawbacks of using type of with objects in order to try to figure out if something is an object or not. So let's just do a few type of expressions in the console and see what we get. Let me clear that. And then first one we'll do is type of and then a simple object. And of course, that returns an object. Obviously, if we do type of and an array, that returns an object as well. Now, we have talked about functions being objects. But what happens if we do a type of and then we have a function? Let me just set a function up here really quick. And that returns function. So it differentiates between a function as an object and an array as an object. An array is considered just object where a function, because it has a more specialized functionality, it does return function. However, we think things are, are going great, but then we get something like this. The type of null, the null value is object for some reason in JavaScript. And so that can throw things off. Now there's lots of other objects that are used in JavaScript. For example, if we have a date object, it comes back as an object. Or say we have a regular expression. That comes back as an object as well. But then there's the other data types that don't. So if we do type of and then we have some sort of string that comes back as a string or type of and a number. We can also do type of symbol. Just create a symbol here really quick. And that comes back as a symbol. And then of course type of true or false come back as a Boolean. And then finally type of undefined comes back as undefined. That's the the type for that. So we can see that in many cases type of works great for determining what type of data we're working with. But when we're dealing with objects, as we see up here, objects is a large category and a lot of different things can be an object. And even null is considered an object. And so that's what we, we are working with when we're doing a conditional, when we're checking for objects. All right, now let's take a look at those functions. Now I've got some code in here already. I'll talk about it in just a moment. But first, let's look at the functions. Basically, I copied them in just as they were entered 
in that article. Now these are all created as arrow functions, so if you need to brush up on that, I'll link to a tutorial in the description and you can go to that tutorial and brush up on arrow functions. So here's our three functions. Up above, I've created a few data types, a function, a map, and a date. And the reason I created some of these data types is down below, I have multiple console log statements just to test to see what we receive from each of these three functions. So for example, the first one, I log to the console the fact that we're checking null, and then I call is object, pass in null. I call is object like, pass in null, and is plain object, pass in null. So we can see the difference. And I do that with arrays, I do that with a function, I do that with a map, and I do that with a date object. Just so we can see some of the different results we get. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and run these console log statements and see what we get. So we can see a little bit difference between is object, is object like, and is plain object. So I'm just going to refresh that. And first, the good thing is that null is not considered an object in any of those functions. So is object returns false, is object like returns false, and is plain object returns false. Now with an array, is object returns true, is object like returns true. So it is an object and it's like an object. But notice that the last one is plain object returns false. So this one here is looking for a plain JavaScript object. Not anything that is object like, meaning arrays or maps or dates or regular expressions, whatever it is. It's not looking for any of those. It's only looking for plain objects. When we pass in a function, we get true with the first one, we get false with the next two. So they are not type of object, and so that's why we're getting false here and down here as well, because type of function returns a function. And then map returns true for the first two, and date returns true for the first two as well. Notice that for the last function, we've got false for everything right now. And that's because we're looking for plain objects. So if I copy this console log statement, let's just create another one really quick. Let me select all those dates. I'm going to replace it with just an empty object. Like that. Now let's see what we get for that last one. And we get true for everything. So a plain JavaScript object gets true for is object, gets true for its object like, and gets true for being a plain JavaScript object. So basically to summarize the difference of these functions, this one's going to return anything that is considered an object. When we talk about objects in JavaScript, anything that follows that object pattern. Is object like is going to exclude functions, for example, because it's checking to see if the type of is equal to object. And then is plain object is only going to return true if it's a plain JavaScript object. So now let's look at some of the code because we can learn something from this. First off, how is this first one done? Well, it's using the object constructor. And this is an interesting application of this. Some functionality associated with this that is probably not well understood. And so I think it's advantageous to just take a look at the MDN page on object. If we come down, there is a section here that says the object constructor creates an object wrapper for the given value. So we can pass in a value to that and it will create an object wrapper around it. And here's what it does based upon that value. If the value is null or undefined, it will create and return an empty object. So notice what we're doing in here. We're getting passed in some value and then we're going to check that value and we're going to see if it's equal to that value passed into the object constructor. Now, if it's null, it's going to create an empty object. 
Well, empty object is not going to be equal to null that was passed in. And so that returns false. All right, back out here. Otherwise, it will return an object of a type that corresponds to the given value. So whatever value is passed in. So if you remember, this returned true for everything except the null value. We saw why null returned false. Why did the other things return true? Let's keep reading. If the value is an object already, it will return the value. So it doesn't do anything if the value is already an object. And so that's why it returns true for everything else. When called in a non-constructor non context, object behaves identically to new object. So we're usually, we've usually seen the object constructor used with the keyword new. But this tells us that we can actually use it like this as well without the keyword new. And so if the object's already an object, it doesn't do anything to it. So basically you're comparing that to itself and that returns true. So that's why we get true for about everything for this. Now, object is object-like. This has some interesting things. It does a type of, of the value that's passed in and checks to see if that returns object. So we know what type of does. But the other thing it checks is to see if the value is not equal to null. And so obviously null returns false as well as function returns false because the type of function is equal to function. So that's how that one's working. Now, finally, is plain object. This has a couple of interesting things in it to look at. First off, notice that we use a double exclamation point. The exclamation point is the logical not. And so if something is true, it'll make it false. If something is false, it'll make it true. That's basically what it does. The nice thing about this logical operator is it will always return a Boolean. And so how is it being used in our results? Well, basically when we have two together like that, the best way to think about it is it returns true or false based upon the truthy or falsy value. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of truthy and falsy, I'll link to that as well. So this eliminates the, the null immediately because null it has a falsy value. And so putting the double exclamation points indicates that it's false. Then we check the type of to see if it's equal to object. And then finally, the last check we do that makes sure that this is a plain JavaScript object is we check to see if it's constructor is object. Now the constructor for other types of, of objects in JavaScript is going to be something else. For example, the constructor of array is going to be array. The constructor of date is going to be date and so on. But the constructor of a plain JavaScript object is going to be object. And so that how it identifies that it's a plain JavaScript object. All right, so a little bit different tutorial. Basically we took some functions looked at them and examined how they were identifying the different objects in JavaScript. And we we're able to learn some things from those functions as well. All right, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links that I've included all my courses in the description section. Now click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And once again, Thanks for watching.